On this channel, we've made plenty of videos on the periodic table. And right now we have to say that we're going to talk about another element. Today's video is about the most used metal on the planet, and it's called Ferrum. You might ask what the hell is Ferrum? This is Ferrum, F-E, which is Latin for iron. You might know that iron is not the first metal that was discovered by humans, and it's only been 4,000 years since humans started using it. The first time iron was used was in Anatolia, but it takes a thousand years until this metal is actually used, and that started in Mesopotamia. When people learned how to use iron, it basically kicked out bronze and copper from the metal world. You should know that bronze and copper had been used way before iron, but it's much harder to get these two metals, and they cost a lot more. But iron created a revolution, because anywhere you went, you could find iron ore. When humans began learning how to control iron and start building different things with it, the world basically changed, and the Iron Age started. It changed how wars was fought, it changed farming, and all types of tools was built with iron now. But it wasn't that easy. From the day humans discovered iron ore until the day they could melt it and use it for good, it took thousands of years. Like one of the first metals that was discovered is lead, because it was very easy to melt and you could form it into different objects. Bronze and copper were much easier to use than iron, and they were obviously better than lead. The day iron was useful for humans is the day they created a proper furnace, because without a furnace, you really can't use iron. To melt iron, you need a much higher temperature than you need with the other types of metals. If you didn't know, the melting point of iron is about 1260 degrees centigrade, and this melting point is way higher than lead, copper, and bronze. To melt iron, you don't only need a furnace, we would have to create another tool, and that's the bellows. This basically blows air into the furnace and raises the temperature. The first bellows that humans made were made from leather, and the furnace was built with clay. Right here, we want to create a furnace like the old days. This is the piece for the bottom of the furnace, and now we're creating the chimney. For example, we're gonna create a pair of tongs. We make the mold with clay, pour some wax in it, and then wrap it with some mud. And we put it in the furnace. The heat causes the wax to melt off, and on the other side, we have molten iron, and we're gonna pour it inside the mold. After a while, when it gets colder, we break the mold. And now we have two pieces of iron. This is how a tool was built back in the day. We use a nail and our tongs are ready. What you saw is that we had pure iron and we melted and put it inside the mold. But getting iron is not that easy. In nature, there's only iron ore and we have to get the iron out of it. To get some iron ore and get the iron out of it, we're gonna go to the state of Minnesota. And it's good to know that 90% of the US's iron comes from this state. Some say we should call Minnesota the iron state. I mean, just look at the beach. Instead of sand, there is iron ore. Look how it reacts when you put a magnet on it. Our friend here is picking up some sample from this beach. If we want to make pure iron, the first thing we have to do is ground down the iron ore. 
Like for example, he's putting it in these mixers and putting ball bearings to break it down. But back in the day, it wasn't this easy to ground down iron ore. In Minnesota, around the railroad tracks, there's a lot of iron ore. Because a lot of these wagons are carrying iron ore and some of them fall off. And that is why our friend here is picking up some iron ore from the railroad tracks. So we have the iron ore, we ground them down and now we want to melt them and create pure iron. And now we have to build a proper furnace, but we're gonna go old school. This is the chimney and these two containers you're seeing are the bellows, the things that blow air into the fire. We have to add a lip to these bellows so we can attach the leather piece to it. This is the first bellows that they used in the Iron Age. This is how they blew air into the furnace. We're gonna leave it for a few days so it dries and it's ready to use. Now it's time. First things first, let's start the fire. The fire is ready. In the first layer, we're gonna put charcoal and then iron ore. And step by step, we're gonna repeat this process. And we do it until it's filled all the way. And now we're gonna give it air so the temperature rises. Eight hours has passed. We kept adding charcoal to it and gave it air. And at the bottom, there should be a piece of iron because all the iron ore has melted to the bottom. We have to break the chimney to pull the iron out. Three people work for eight hours. We got this much iron. So if this iron wants to turn into anything, first it has to go into a container, then furnace, and then we pour it into a mold. And that's when we can create these tongs. So the iron ore has to be turned into pure iron, and then you melt the pure iron to make different stuff with it. This was basically an ancient iron factory. But iron could be way better than this. We really can't make strong objects with iron. So what should we do? Like we said, this was the beginning. It took thousands of years for iron to turn into steel. What is steel? Steel is basically iron, but 2% of it is carbon and 1% of it is magnesium. And this mixture has created an extremely strong metal, something that ancient humans wished for. Since the day they invented iron, they did all types of experiments so they can make this metal stronger, but they were never successful. And that's until the Industrial Revolution, exactly in the year 1855, the British created the modern steel. And that was the reason they were able to build ships like the Titanic, skyscrapers like the Empire State, insane bridges like the Golden Gate. You think if there was no steel, any of this would be built? It would be impossible because iron is not strong enough to hold any of this. So in this case, we could say figuring out steel was way more revolutionary than figuring out iron. The best thing that came out of the Industrial Revolution is steel, and then it's oil. But if we want to explain everything about steel, it's gonna take a long time. But if there was no steel, would we reach this much technology? How would engineers make gearboxes that could hold this much power? How could they build engines that could hold this much power? 
So now we realize that Fe is the most important metal in the world and you can pretty much find it everywhere on earth. The price is not that much either, but I'm talking about iron ore. Iron ore is about $103 per ton. But if you turn this iron into steel, the price rises about 30 to 40 times. Like steel rebars is about $4,000 per ton. 